The Ariel's pretty typical of a lot of boats built on the Victorian coast back in the late 1800s, early uh, 1900s up to about 1945, 1940. Open boats, typical length 26 feet, used for all sorts of fishing, a lot of cooter fishing. But the Ariel was built for uh, the Keeler Brothers of Portland by Jones, J.R. Jones, in Melbourne in 1927. And she was brought up on the deck of the casino for uh, one pound ten or about three dollars, which was about half a week's wages in those days. So old son Keeler used to tell me. Anyway, they used her for bay excursions from nineteen from nineteen twenty seven till about nineteen thirty three. Take passengers around the bay for twenty cents or two shillings. This is uh, what you see here: people coming back into the. Uh, Jetty to be offloaded. No bowsprit in her at the time. Running passengers and coming into the jetty several times a day. The jetty could be a nuisance coming alongside the jetty. So they did without it. Here's the aerial showing the deck layout. And you'll see she's carried passengers as a sign there on the inside of the combing. And seats there on the inside of the combing for the passengers to sit on. But it clearly shows the layout of the boat the centre plate case and the old pump on the seat there in the middle of a thwart with a handle to pump the water out and um, one of the keelers probably Ariel had a sister here built a year earlier the Pilotta character by the name of Fatty Fredericks had a built a fisherman and had the contract to take the pilot out to the ships and bring them off again as they were leaving a renowned boat, the old piloter. This is what the uh, the foreshore could be like sometimes. That's the old fisherman's breakwater with the waves breaking over in a southeasterly blow, which at times wrecked fishing boats. Here's a photo of an aftermath after a storm. I think this was 1923. You can see the mass of boats sticking out of the water. Boats that have been filled up with water as they come over the breakwater and sank. The corks there floating in the water, the corks off nets and lobster pots or cray pots that were washed off the breakwater into the uh, into the sea. The area was owned till from 1933 till about 73 by Jack Arkle. Seen here with a couple of his dogs. Seen here in the stern of a dinghy in his South Portland backyard. Very capable, very unassuming bloke, Jack Arkle, champion cooter fisherman. Here's a photo of the aerial taken mid-30s perhaps, when she was still painted white. Um, she was up on the jetty, the story has it, on chocks, propped up. Southeasterly storm come up, knocked her off the chocks. And you can see there, there's a plank stove in just back from the bow, right on the waterline. You'll see the fault there. And I reckon the fellow standing second from the right, with his back to us... Jack Arkell. Just the same sort of stance as Jack had. Pity they weren't all looking this way. For the first six or seven years of her life, Ariel was painted white, as seen in the old photos. But when Jack bought her in the early 30s, he painted her black because he used to scull out to her in the old clinker dinghy and come alongside and leave a black smudge on the white hull. So he painted the boat black. And she was like that for 50 or 60 years until the restoration. And we uh, painted her white again, which is the best colour for a boat anyway. Black absorbs the heat, makes planks shrink. Not good for a wooden boat. And set about restoring her not to fish with, well not professionally, but as a sailing recreational boat and to keep uh, the cooter boat tradition alive in Portland. I'd hate to see her leave the town where she belongs. That was in 1973 I bought her. By 1979 I was very busy with a young family and a fishing boat that had to be slipped twice a year in those days. So I sold her to Roy Jennings and he did a very good job with her, Roy. He eventually re her and replaced the centre plate, replaced the masts and sails over time. And Roy and his mates had a lot of fun with her. Trips to the island, 
trips to Port Ferry for the Folk Festival, living on board, a bit of sailing around the bay. I didn't really want to sell it, but I was so busy with other stuff. I said to Roy, if you're ever going to sell it, I'd like to know. I'd like first offer. So 27 years later, I got the phone call. I said, well, I really appreciate you remembering me, Roy. But no, you sell it, someone else. I don't need it. But he couldn't sell it to anyone locally, so uh, I ended up buying it. Again, back in about, I can't remember now, 2008 or something, perhaps. And uh, she was getting a bit of age on her by then, so eventually, 2014, I think it was, took her up to John Seeley's shed and did a major refit. The old fastenings were very sick. We'd taken a couple out for a sample. Copper nails had eaten away. And she was very loose up around the stem where the uh, planks fastened to the stem. And we eventually replaced the stem and uh, all the nails under the waterline. So this is Ian Bott here uh, in the process of uh, replacing the nails. Here's Evan here grinding the head off a nail, grinding the, uh, the burr off, the burr off the rove. Okay, we're just going to take the rove off, the old rove. We'll just punch. Here's the one that came out of the garbage, and that's been the case in the boat right along. So it's only been good luck she's been staying afloat. With the new nail, we put put the new copper nail through, and then the rove gets put on top of that. You saw me holding the dolly before. Inside the rove is set uh, with a little tool. And then the nails cut off and peamed over, and then we've got a new, brand new rivet. The inside of the hull looks a bit untidy. She's been painted many times and uh, old Jack periodically would tar the inside of the boat. Tar is a great preserver of all sorts of things. It was used for ropes and buoys and corks and of course for the insides of boats for preserving wood. Those ribs might look untidy but they're actually very sound. They're 86 years old now, well they were 86 years old at the time and uh, they'll be in there for a long time yet. Here's Gary Stewart replacing a lodging knee in the stern. It's been broken. Right, this is the quarter knee on the transom. And the uh, timber's graded around the bolt hole or the hole of the hose pipe and caused the timber to rot away there. Fresh water's probably been getting in. So we've replaced that with a new one. Uh, of course, Gary's well known in boating circles in South East Australia, famous for the beautiful vessels he's built. Fishing boats like Ross Andrew Allen, Joanna Cherie, Ultimate Ambition, and of course Jane Kerr that he built for me in 1981. Lovely vessel. And he's built cooter boats and motor sailors, including the Renaissance and others. Uh, just painting with primer where the where the knee fits and then I'll touch it together and where it needs a bit planing off the paint will be showing on the on the knee. So I'll plane that little bit off and puts it up in place, taps it into position, a tap fit. Just raking out the old corking here to uh, have a look and see what's behind everything here. The old stem's looking a bit tired on itself. 
Uh, Paddy's pretty hard and knackered, as the fastenings are as well. She's had lots of fastenings in the stem over the years. We could see that the planks weren't fastening properly. Kept screwing it, tried screws in it to hold it together without a great deal of success. And we soon find out why, uh, why this was going on. So Gary's working on the stem here, trying to get all the fastenings out before we try, before he tries to pull it out. And it's got to go vertically upwards because the stem's bigger behind the rabbit line, behind the end of the planks, than what it is forward of them. So the stem should go out vertically. You can't pull it out horizontally. Well, you shouldn't be able to. But as it turns out, everything's so crook in there. The stem was split. That's why the fastings wouldn't hold. The stem was split. He's wedging her up here. Trying to wedge it out, take her out vertical. The top part of the stem was actually broken. <coughs> Had a fracture in it and that came away pretty easy. And then with a lot of wedging and a lot of heaving, the stem actually comes out forward, which it shouldn't do. But that's the design. But that's a uh, indication of how much she was deteriorated. She comes out straight forward there not being much left behind it all the timber being cracked and split where the fastenings have been going in no wonder she was very sick up in that area you can see there the old nails are just sitting in thin air so Gary goes about cutting ends off the old planks gluing and splicing short pieces into the ends of the old planks Pretty powerful glue they make today. He's scarfing it away there to fit to fit the short end of a plank. He's just uh, replaced the short length of plank here. You might remember that photo of old Ariel in the 1930s when she came off the blocks on the jetty and stove the end of this plank in. Well, no doubt it was replaced then, but it had to re be replaced again. Sort of planed it to fit. And then fitted the scarf joint at the end and I've left that thick on that end there until the glue's dry and then I'll take the screws out and just fair that in then. So um, uh, just cutting out here for a scarf each side and a little piece of plank to go in here. Well the ends were all uh, damaged over time so we've sort of got to tidy up there was a few dowels and that through so these ends here this one were pretty bad so these ones up here will uh, just put short scarf pieces in to give a nice neat end again for the rabbit so he goes to fit the new uh, the new stem head the apron's been replaced on the inside and then uh, the new stem has to come down vertical can't be pushed in horizontally from a head for obvious reasons there she goes perfect fit and refastens the stem through to the apron on the inside She's nearly as good as new. Replacing the old stem head. That's an old piece of brass. That it came off the wreck of the Wanderer. The Wanderer's built in 1890 and wrecked in the teen years of the 20th century. The fittings were, uh, the fittings were salvaged and used in the construction of Ariel. So there's the old stem head, dating from 1890, still in use, still as sound as a bell. Evan, patting a few nail holes. Gary Stewart corking the garbage plank 
where it joins the keel. It's the only part of a cooter boat that is actually corked. All the other planks are fitted one to the other. Nothing between them, no filling. They tend to leak when they're first launched, but they very soon take up and are very tight. Fit and watertight. Pretty skillful people, these wooden boat builders. And of course, he's corking her in the time on the method, using the old tools, just as they might have 200 years ago. Expert tradesman, master of his art. Beautiful to watch. Everything's padded up, of course, afterwards. The vessel painted. Putting a new corking cotton into the garbage seam. Um, we'll just run it in first with the making iron and then go over it with the finishing iron to put it, put, put it in nice and even and uh, tighten it up. We're just about finished through there now. What sort of order are you in along there? Big what, what's the hull like along there? Uh, it's pretty good actually. The keel, even though there's a few little battle scars, it's uh, very solid. The jar is still in good condition and the, um, all the planking is still in good condition, condition and um, regard, you know, seeing it of its age, the New Zealand carry is still, still good. Here's my old friend John Seely. You're a bloody cheeky bugger, you are. When I was 16, John gave me a job. I could hardly string two words together those days, but he gave me a job and he paid me well and he treated me well. I owe John a lot. I don't know if I'd be where I am today if it weren't for John Seely. He gave me a lot of support when I left him after 12 months and went on my own. He was still a big help. Young fella starting off at 17. He knew I was struggling. I'm very grateful to John. A great asset to the fishing industry is John Seely in all sorts of ways. Very successful. He's noted for his caustic comments and and wry humour. <laughs> None of us need have any illusions while John Seely's around. He'll keep our feet on the ground. Les Thomas kindly offered to uh, sand the uh, mast and spars in Matthew's shed. Not much of a job, but it's a job he did cheerfully and well. And one of the last jobs was to refit the chafing batten, or sponson, I think as some people call them, chafing batten, whatever. It's a part that touches the wharf, or the fenders. Gary Stewart set up a steamer here, your steam water, which goes up through the tube and steams and moisturises and warms the timber to make it easy to bend. It's used for bending ribs in boats and uh, other things that need bending. Fitting her all up, clamping her in position before bolting her in place. I don't seem to have any photos or footage of uh, the relaunch of the boat, but uh, she's back in the water, been back in the water six years, and uh, she can be seen at the inner end of the new marina with an interpretive plaque explaining what she was used for. Back in the good old days, when men used to arm cooter and haul cray pots by hand. Piece of Portland's history. She needs to be kept here. This is her home.